superstars of the WWF's new generation. So, WWF in your house on the PlayStation 1. If you've been keeping up with my wrestling video game uploads, you'll remember I said that I got this one on Christmas along with WCW vs The World and Power Move Pro Wrestling. I played all three of these games to death and In Your House got a fair share of time in my PlayStation 1 back in the day. That being said, going back to it now, it makes me wonder what I was thinking. I made the wrong choice back here, WrestleMania the arcade game was definitely the better of the two games, but the prospect of playing an updated version of WrestleMania sounded great at the time, and to be fair, when I was younger, the game wasn't that bad, but it hasn't aged well at all. Midway handled the development of WrestleMania the arcade game and it really shows. It looked and felt like a sort of NBA Jam Mortal Kombat hybrid that was easy to pick up but hard to master. It was loads of fun and even today I still really enjoy playing it. I thought that WWF in your house would be more of the same, I mean screenshots of the game looked similar, same digitised characters, same combo bar, same wacky character offence, it looked like a proper sequel to Wrestlemania, and I do think this is what they were going for here, but it just wasn't the same. So WWF In Your House, named after the bi-monthly pay-per-view series that debuted in 1995, was released on PlayStation, Sega Saturn and DOS in late 1996. Now, I know there are loads of viewers here who also had this game and will also defend it, and that's fine. As I say, I played this loads when I was a kid and I genuinely enjoyed it. But as the years go on and we go back and play In Your House and play Wrestlemania, it's clear as day which one was the best. The home offerings of Wrestlemania, particularly on the 16-bit consoles, suffered greatly and of course, if you owned Wrestlemania on the Super Nintendo but ended up buying In Your House for the PlayStation, then yes, In Your House was probably a better experience. If you go back and play the arcade version of Wrestlemania though, or even the Sega Saturn or PlayStation versions, and you actually spend time with the game, you'll notice that Wrestlemania was leagues above in your house in terms of pure gameplay. Midway had nothing to do with In Your House. Sculptured Software, a development studio owned by game publisher Acclaim, developed In Your House and so the game loses that Midway feeling that WrestleMania had. That being said, Sculptured Software did carry over the control scheme from WrestleMania and also presented the game in a very similar fashion. As said earlier, it does keep the same look as WrestleMania. Its release was very low profile. Acclaim were suffering from financial issues during 1996 and their promotional budget was spent mostly on the Turok game, hoping that this N64 release would be the answer to the company's woes at the time. Many large gaming publications such as EGM didn't even review In Your House, along with the official Sega Saturn magazine. For a WWF game, this is quite unheard of. Some publications and websites did eventually review the game, but we'll get to that a little later. The roster first of all then, and this gives us an idea of when the game was developed. Vader is in here, a man who made his debut in the WWF in January of 1996. Ultimate Warrior is also here, who made his WWF return at WrestleMania 12 in late March of 1996. We will assume then that the development and character digitization began in March. What's odd though is that Jeff Jarrett was scheduled to be in the game, as we can see from these photos of the character capture process. Jeff Jarrett had already left the WWF before WrestleMania 12. He had a contract dispute with the WWF shortly after the Royal Rumble in 1996, the same Royal Rumble where Vader made his debut. 
This leads me to believe that these character captures were done well before the Ultimate Warrior made his WWF return in March of 96, seeing as Jeff Jarrett is here in these photos. The only other explanation is that the Ultimate Warrior was captured way later in the game's development, and these photos are from two different development sessions, but we will never know I guess. You can also see here that Sunny was captured for the game but she didn't make the final cut. I'm not too sure when she would have made an appearance in the game, but of note here is that she is wearing her Body Donna's ring attire. The Body Donna's aren't in the game either. Just a little side note though. So we've got 10 superstars to choose from here with many guys making their WWF game debut. Returning superstars from past games include Bret Hart, Ultimate Warrior, Owen Hart, The British Bulldog, The Undertaker, and Shawn Michaels, while newcomers include Vader, Ahmed Johnson, Goldust, and Hunter Hearst Helmsley. It's a decent roster, it's not like the 1996 WWF roster was that deep anyway, so what we get here isn't too bad. Game modes include the WWF Season, which is your typical arcade mode, and you can also go for the IC or WWF titles. The championship modes here work exactly like WrestleMania, where you will need to play handicap matches with increasing difficulty as the mode continues on. The last match in the WWF Championship mode is a battle royal featuring every wrestler in the game. The first thing you'll notice is that matches don't take place in typical wrestling arenas, but instead each wrestler has their own personalised stage and ring. This I feel is a great touch. The developers got creative too, allowing us to wrestle in Stu Hart's dungeon and Goldust's movie theatre, so credit where credit's due. The final WWF Championship match takes place in a standard arena, and the arena looks pretty good too. With the game being on disc, we also get full motion video endings that are quite short but still better than what we had before. Completing the game will give you little videos showing your character in the ring, and the game also had a video opening. Vince McMahon and Mr Perfect deliver commentary throughout the game, and this is also one of the better points of the game, but it does get repetitive quite fast. And so we come to the gameplay and yeah, this is where it goes downhill I'm afraid. WrestleMania had that one more game quality that's hard to pinpoint but In Your House just doesn't have that same feeling at all. While the control scheme and button layout is unchanged from WrestleMania, the actual movement of your character doesn't feel right at all. Anyone watching the game side by side may think there's no difference in the controlling of characters, but just play it and you'll know what I mean. Collision detection wasn't great in WrestleMania, but it's a whole lot worse here and in your house. You gotta line up everything perfectly, which does take away from what the game is supposed to be. A fast paced and chaotic fighting game. Special moves are performed the same way as WrestleMania. You perform Mortal Kombat style button combinations to pull off the moves. Special moves are again over the top and crazy, from Owen Hart shooting cards at his opponent to Shawn Michaels flexing out fireballs. I've no problem with this concept here, the over the top stuff is a breath of fresh air, particularly when the WWF games had always been extremely repetitive during the 16 bit era. I actually wish the WWE would do more stuff like this. I also really enjoyed the arcade style of WWE All Stars when it was released. The combo bar makes a return here and the combos are pulled off the exact same way as WrestleMania. It's all Dala combo, there's no experimenting here and no freestyling. You need to know the correct button combination in order to pull off a predetermined combo. A new addition is the taunt system which basically lets you pull off one taunt per round and if you can successfully hit your opponent after a taunt you will do extra damage. Another new addition, wrestlers also have finishing moves here and in fairness there isn't much to look at. Wrestlemania was supposed to have finishing moves but the only one that got completed in time was the Undertakers. Anyway, matches are 2 out of 3 falls and if you pin your opponent in the deciding round and pull off the button combination, you'll get these little animations that, in all honesty, add nothing to the game. Finishing moves in Mortal Kombat made a ton of noise and the game was centred around destroying your opponent after the fight, but in your house, you don't even care if you pull it off. It doesn't really add anything to the game. You'd be totally excited to pull off a Mortal Kombat fatality, but here, you just shrug your shoulders and move on. 
One thing that I feel really breaks the game are these little icons that appear in the ring. Now, before I go on, these can be turned off, but it's left on as a default and there's no save option in the game, so you're naturally going to forget to turn it off. Anyway, these are power ups and power downs. The silver WWF logos give you a boost in health, speed or combo, while the red logos slow you down, deplete your combo or even worse, remove health. It's bad enough that these things are scattered around the ring and can basically change the outcome of a match, but there's so many of them, they are fucking everywhere. It's like landmines all over the ring, and your job is to avoid the red logos while still trying to beat your opponent, all the while dealing with the weird character control. Also, the icons just pop out of nowhere. You could literally be standing in the ring, minding your own business, and an icon just hits you and takes health away. Again, you can turn this off, but if you're like me, you just start a game without checking options, totally forgetting about the icons until they pop up in the ring, and you just end up dealing with it because you can't be annoyed quitting out of the game. Also, the digitization of characters here was nowhere near as good as WrestleMania. Check out Shawn Michaels for example. What happened here? Vader, for some reason, seems to have more frames of animation than anyone else, while Ultimate Warrior hardly has none. If we are to believe this game was made somewhere between January and March of 1996, and the game was released in October the same year, you can instantly tell then that this game was totally rushed, and graphically, it does show. So going back to In Your House in late 2019 isn't a great experience. Your best bet is to leave the memories alone and move on. This style of wrestling game would never return after Acclaim decided to move the WWF games into 3D with the release of Warzone in 1998. It was needed after In Your House. Warzone had its own issues regarding controls as the WCW games over on the Nintendo 64 totally destroyed its gameplay, but we will look at Warzone in the future. Going back to In Your House, yes it was fun back in the day and the game does give some good memories, but if I didn't have those memories and I played this for the very first time in 2019, yeah, it, it's not a great experience. You can see what they tried to do here though, WrestleMania was pretty well received and the general idea was to update the game with a new roster, new stages, those fucking power ups, but somehow they totally lost the fun gameplay of its predecessor. I do think though there is definitely a market for these types of wrestling games though if they can be done right. With the abysmal reviews of WWE 2K20 and how stale that series has become, there's no better time than right now for the WWE and a different developer to try something new. It can't be any worse than where we are now. So how was In Your House reviewed back in the day? As mentioned, the game was kept kinda quiet and many publications didn't even bother with a write up, but a few did. GamePro said that the PlayStation version of In Your House was a title full of promise and potential that ultimately gets pinned in its quest for the championship, while GameSpot said that the Saturn version was little more than a rehash of the original. The scores across the board were average, there wasn't anything that stood out at all for critics and honestly, I'd have to agree with them. But in saying that, wrestling fans like you and I have a kind of soft spot for eras of the past. Take a look at some of the pay per views we sat through and we will sit through again and we kind of get a kick out of how things used to be. Sometimes it was better but also we have to admit to ourselves sometimes that sometimes it wasn't.